quill upon our request. I want to talk to you a little bit today about something that affects all of us, afflicts all of us, and something with which everybody has probably had some level of personal experience. And it's not just the general notion of bullying, it's the whole concept of parts of school that tend to be kind of an endless arm wrestle, kind of like Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill only to have it roll back down, only to push it back up, only to have it roll back down. And that would be middle school. I don't know of anybody who can recall the wonder and joy of that non-stop glorious experience. If you went to middle school before the age of Facebook or Twitter or uh, Mr. Bush's internets, if you remember he had a plural version, the internets, if you went to school before that, then it was just simply gossip in the hallways could really ruin your next week. Well, now it's worse. If you post simply a word on Facebook, it could be interpreted by everyone, forwarded. You basically set your whole path. It's a different world. It's a different experience today. And I want to bring on a woman who has written a very cool book. As you can see, I'm holding it here. It's called The Drama Years, and it's by Haley Kirkpatrick. And the word drama, she means drama, big time. If you've watched Glee, that's the nice version. And uh, Haley Kirkpatrick, I want to welcome you to the show. Am I right saying Glee? That's the nice version compared to what you're looking at here. You got it. It's tough being in the hallways of middle school today. It's it's a challenge for girls of all backgrounds, and we, we really aim to kind of dig in and roll up our sleeves and figure out exactly what's going on and how parents, teachers, and adults can, can help make the time easier. Uh, Haley is the executive director of Girl Talk, which is a national program where high school girls mentor grade school girls. That's a tough one, isn't it? Mentor grade school girls about dealing with teenage hood. Now that's not a hoodie because if you're wearing one in Florida, bang, no more. <laughs> different topic, different show. She's also the author of the drama girls that I just held up, a shiny, glossy, exciting book. And a book is something that you've probably heard about in the hallways. They print them on paper. You can actually hold it. It's quite different from what you would see on an iPad. It's kind of traditional. But they're handy because they're portable and they don't need electricity. So I really recommend one of these things. Do you like the sarcasm? As you can see, I miss them. It's such a wonderful, uh, old-fashioned and proper thing to do. She created Girl Talk in 2002 when she was just 15 years old in Albany, Georgia. You'll hear a wonderful sound. I lived in Florida for many years, so I appreciate your sound. It, it actually is very comforting to me. You think I'm kidding. I'm really quite serious. Because I know that if I turn, you're going to say, bless his heart. And we know that as a double meaning, doesn't it? That's right. She now lives in Hotlanta, also known as Atlanta, if you're looking at a map. And uh, that's right. And there are 40, uh, you have chapters in 43 different states, six countries across the world. And you have been named Glamour's 20 Young Women Changing the World Now as opposed to changing the world 20 years ago. You're doing it now. Now is what it matters, as we all know. Um, boy, what else? Teachers and administrators uh, love you. You're just loved. Uh, your mentoring and character education has spoken to more than 22,000 youth educators throughout America. You've been featured on such national outlets as NBC's Today Show, NBC Nightly News, CNN, HLN, Not Nancy Grace, and ABC. And we're really glad to have you here because one of the things that we love to look at is the solution rather than just the problem. And you're in the fix-it side of things, and boy, is there a lot to do. It's refreshing to actually have a conversation about the solution. Now that the, the book's out, we still, everyone wants to talk about the problem. And it's frustrating. You know, there is uh, what we found through, you know, 10 years of work at Girl Talk and over 2,000 hours worth of interviews with middle and high school girls was that there really is a lot of hope in the hallways. There are girls who genuinely want to be good friends. They want to have parents modeling good behavior. They, they, they want to have a drama-free world. They just need to have the, the tools to help, to help them get there. And I think the book sheds a lot of light. It sheds a very realistic, very dramatic picture of what middle school girls go through. Uh, everything from cyberbullying, bullying, body image issues, 
uh, how to talk to your parents, boys and dating. So we really kind of really dig into those issues and say, you know, what is it like to be a middle schooler today? How has technology made it different? And, you know, what are some things you think we can do to help? So I do believe that Girl Talk is a key part of the solution in that high school girls mentor middle school girls. High school girls really do learn through teaching, and it's a leadership opportunity for them. And middle school girls, unfortunately, are more influenced by their slightly older peers at that age. So if we can communicate kind of these, these effective messages to them uh, on, on making tough decisions and how to behave and treat each other, you know, my hope is that not only will they be more influenced by their slightly older peers, but we will slowly begin to change the behavior in the hallways and you know, just to you know, just to kind of segue over into the drama years, it's just a book to help parents understand things that they can do and things that we found that work through Girl Talk, uh, such as an anchor activity, an outside activity outside of school that she could build her self esteem, a, a peer mentor, obviously, which Girl Talk does, but you don't necessarily have to do it through Girl Talk, and uh, community service and getting middle school girls, no matter what socioeconomic background they're from, involved in service is shown to be uh, a key thing to help combat this kind of brand consciousness. At Girl Talk, we call it materialistic madness. So there's, we do try to give some tangible takeaways. So here's a question, Haley Kirkpatrick, the founder and executive director of Girl Talk. This is a national program where high school girls mentor grade school girls about dealing with being a, a teenager. And of course, if you want to call in and talk to Haley and uh, anonymously or not uh, using a Google platform or a regular phone, talk about what you're going through, she'd be really happy to talk to you. Um, a question that I imagine most people ask you, particularly at the national TV level, where complicated questions are impossible for them to ask. So they ask the superficial, easy questions like, well, wait a minute, you're so pretty, you can't possibly have been bullied, right? Isn't that the first one they ask? I hate that question. I hate it. It is so awkward. Um, you know, I, I, I try to, um, to be perfectly honest, try to sidestep it. It's like I really do think that every girl has a tough experience. For me, I was the new girl. I showed up to sixth grade. I, I, I think I threw off the pH balance of my middle school hallways, and it ticked a lot of girls off. Really? Were you like alkaline or acid? <laughs> TBD, TBD, you know, we'll see. Uh, no, I don't have no idea what I did. I just showed up in this new new school and uh, apparently was not welcome. Um, and they made it very clear and it made it very tough to to, to get through the day and to, to actually make good grades, which was the reason I was there. My grades were affected. And, you know, I think it's interesting, you know, now we're hearing from people like uh, Brooke Shields, we're hearing from Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, even Tyra Banks talks about what a terrible time they had and how they were made fun of, whether it was, you know, being super skinny and a big forehead or glasses or whatever it may be. No girl is exempt from, from the middle school bullying experience, um, whether, whether you want to make that, you know, make that decision about looking at someone or not. It was actually... Uh, very, very difficult. You know, it's interesting. When I was looking at your book, The Drama Years, Haley, <coughs> I, I realized something that isn't, isn't the way that we normally look at bullying. Bullying, we see a fat kid or, or a big muscly guy as the bully, you know, sort of the classic TV, black and white, Mickey Rooney type thing. But girls, bullying girls, this is not in the public dialogue. And I have a theory, actually it's a hypothesis. I would need several hypotheses to form a theory. <laughs> My hypothesis is, yeah, you're the new girl, but you are um, aesthetically provoking. And it could be, I say that in a nice way, of course, it could be well, that off. threatens <laughs> the other girls, right? Because isn't ultimately bullying about somebody who wants to have the power and something steps in the way or threatens that level of power or their insecurity or their low self-esteem. And if you come in like a flashy, shiny lure in a sea of fuzzy jigs, it's a fishing term, um, you know, maybe they want to scratch the lure. You know, there's definitely, you have those girls, absolutely, who, you know, like I said, you throw off the pH balance and they attack. The claws come out one claw at a time. You also have, because of technology, this group of girls who are also very passive, aggressive towards each other. They're actually able to bully each other 
anonymously with very little accountability. It doesn't have to be face to face. Uh, and it, it, it's really, you know, what we found, to be perfectly honest, in, in these series of inter interviews with girls, we said, why are you doing this? Why are you not standing up when you have a friend treating another friend terribly or, or tearing her down? Why are you not stepping up? And it was amazing that all these middle school girls couldn't give us an answer. They said, you know, we don't know, we feel bad. And when we went and interviewed high school girls, they kind of looked back and shed some, some light and saying, you know, now that we think about it, not only have we gone on to apologize uh, for the most part to the girls we were ugly to, but we were so relieved that the spotlight wasn't on us, that we were not the target of ridicule. And we were just so excited that it was on, we were relieved that it was on someone else. So that's why we didn't step up and say, you know, this is wrong. So for me, it was only one or two girls that made my middle school experience a nightmare. But what the, the problem was is that the followers, the 20, 30 girls that followed it, never stood up and said anything. And I'll bet you, as we talked to Haley Kilpatrick, the founder and executive director of Girl Talk, this national program where high school girls are mentoring grade school girls, just one under them, and, and buttressing them with the basic uh, tools, survival tools, and understanding of why this is going on and how to circumvent the worst parts of it because there's life experience that's already happened from the older girls. So in other words, you're not walking in blind into a situation, you're walking in armed. I mean, this is classic stuff from a 100, 200 years ago when we had a civil society. And as, as we look at, at your book here, um, it, it, one of the things that I learned, and it never occurred to me, I don't use Facebook as a, you know, beep, beep, beep to somebody, right? It's like, it's just not for me. But the way you point out social media, let's say I post, you know, Haley, fill in the blank, that becomes a truth because it's like it's a newspaper. Yeah. And then you have to try to convince all these people who you're never even going to meet anyway that really it didn't happen that way, and you can't. And then they spread it, and they spread it, and they spread it. And so in middle school now, you're doing damage control before it even happens. Wow. It's exhausting to be a middle schooler today. Uh, technology plays a huge part of that. And I say, you know, the world middle school girls live in, the, the only main difference from, from what our parents experienced is that when these girls leave school, they cannot escape the drama. And we call it digital abuse because that's what it is. It's 24 seven. These girls are being harassed, whether it's anonymously or not. They're being, you know, there's, I mentioned there's less accountability. These girls are also getting each other's passwords and they're making a horrible status post as someone they're not. And so you talk about damage control uh, when it comes to, to pictures and, 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 and rumors. They're, they're living in a world of anxiety. And the main problem here is that our, the girls that we're, that we're working with, uh, most girls, I should say, aren't, aren't being raised in dual parent households. They're being raised in single parent homes, blended families. We've talked with girls in foster care group homes. And there's not those extra layers of support that you can actually, you know, you, you have your teachers who are in oversized classrooms. And so I think that there are, there's so much a need for a sup for supplemental programs. Girl Talk is one of hundreds, but supplemental programs are, are really finding that we're having to be a part of this solution. We're having to teach character development. We're having to teach manners. We're having to teach girls how to respect themselves and their peers. And we're doing it through this peer to peer model, which, you know, in reality is, is the, the magic of Girl Talk and seeing that they are listening to their older peers. So I think that the, the best way that, that we're being a part of the solution is by that, that peer to peer component, but on a larger scale through, through the drama years, educating parents on the power and the teachers, the power of this, the, the peer to peer model. And if you are working, if you're a single mom working and you feel like you're, you might not be completely connected to your middle school, do your middle school daughter, or she may not be opening up to you that, you know, she's got someone she can look up to and, and go to if she's really having a hard time. Uh, you know, and because I take you back to my middle school experience, I actually had two working parents and I was the oldest of, of three and I didn't have an older sister. But even in my own environment, I felt ashamed of what was going on in my middle school experience. And I really did feel like I was the only one. And I was absolutely convinced that there was something wrong with me. And I wished that I would get in the car and wish I didn't look the way I did. I wish that, you know, some boy when I wasn't even interested in boys had not asked me out because of the, the, the social repercussions. Um, you know, 
<laughs> all I mean, you, you name it, it made it a miserable time in my life. And if I had not chose to be a part of, you really made the decision to be a part of the solution, I think that I really would suffer from horrible social anxiety today with, with girls my own age and really felt paralyzed as, a, in, as an individual and not really have ever gone on to reach my full potential. We're talking to Haley Kilpatrick as we wrap up the conversation here. She's the founder and executive director of Girl Talk, a national program where high school girls uh, mentor, talk to peer-to-peer -peer conversations with younger girls and give them the shortcut between point A and point B rather than walking blindly into a bear trap that did not exist 10 years ago. A lot, a lot of it. I mean, plenty of stuff but now multiply it, as she points out, by digital abuse, by endless social media that gets virally spread around. One little thing of gossip can now hit a million people, potentially, whereas before it might have hit four people in the hallway. Extraordinary new issues to talk about. And I think one of the smart and intuitive things that you discovered here, Haley, is peer-to-peer -peer is so the way to go. Having a man mentor a little girl and say, listen, honey, let me tell you what to do. It ain't going to fly. But if you say, you know what, I went through it myself. Here's what I did to circumnavigate this kind of issue specifically. They're going to believe you. They are. And, you know, there's so much power in hearing that you're not alone. And this doesn't just apply to, to girls. There are plenty of boys. So if parents are listening and they have middle school boys, identify a slightly older high school boy who can walk alongside your middle school girl and kind of, excuse me, your middle school boy and get them kind of over that, that bridge. And it applies for all of us. I mean, I have wonderful mentors in the work, in, in, in the workplace. Um, we all need people we can look up to and hear that it's okay. You're doing a great job or you need to, you need to make some better decisions, whatever it is. I think there's such a, such an emphasis on mentor. We need to put a more, more emphasis on mentoring and really realize that the best way to help our middle schoolers today is by uh, this peer to peer opportunity. You know, there's, it, it creates a leadership opportunity for high school kids too to say, you know, we do think you're a leader. You could be a role model, and uh, they learn through teaching these lessons that they're that they're that they're teaching their younger peers. So, you know, one thing I do want to tell you uh, that we learned through through this process of the drama years is girls kept telling us they want to have the tough conversations. They're like, you know, my parents don't realize when I get to middle school, all of a sudden, you know, I'm learning terminology. I'm learning. I'm learning. You know crazy things my body or my body's about to start doing or is already doing. I'm being pressured by my peers to drink. I'm learning about pot, you know, whatever it is. And parents are somewhat in denial that their sixth and seventh graders are learning about these things. And they kept saying, you know, I want our parents to come to us and have these tough conversations. Talk to us about bullying and what we need to do if we're experiencing it. Um, underage drinking. I'm telling parents screaming from the rooftops this month. It's Alcohol Awareness Month. Um, nationwide, and there's tons of resources. Use this as a great excuse to have that conversation with your kids. But they're at, they're begging for you to come to them and make it okay to talk about these awkward things. And we don't even have to get into some of the more awkward things they want it, they want parents to talk about. But but you know, really have those conversations. So when they're faced with those pressures, they feel comfortable coming to you. And if you don't have a peer mentor in place where they can go and get the right advice as opposed to relying on their peers. I have an idea uh, as we wrap this up. Uh, we want to help you. And you just gave me a great idea. We'd like to put together this kind of format. If you put out the word through all of your social networks, we'll do the same on FM radio. Let's get tens of thousands of people to log on and let's bring on you and maybe some other girls and let girls anonymously if they want or through the phone or whatever call in to interface with you. It's It'll help you move some books too. I mean, it's got all the happy mojo in the world for everything <laughs> positive. We can get your brand out there, but we can also offer a live theater for you to interact with girls and offer some live tips if you're open for that. Yes, I would, I would absolutely be honored. And, you know, Girl Talk itself, we work really hard to make the program available at absolutely no cost for a high school girl to bring it to our community. So it would be an incredible opportunity to, uh, to hopefully inspire some some high school girls to want to step up and, and help girls in their community. I'd love it. And, and you are exactly the right captain to be on this ship. <laughs> so I vote yes for you. And we obviously want to support you. Give us a website quickly before we run here so that people can visually go and check out what you're doing. Thank you again for your support. I really appreciate it. Um, Girl Talk's website is desiretoinspire.org. 
if you can help me get girltalk.org at LA, it's just being like, it's not a non use site. And we really need it, by the way. Uh, but desire to inspire.org. And we also um, have the drama years.com. You can Google either one of the two and get the get the domains. But um, but every all the information about the book and how to bring girl talk to your community is available on the site. Awesome. Thank you so much. No, so much, you. Haley Kilpatrick. I'm, I'm going to run, but I'm going to ask you just afterwards. Um, do you see the lady at the bottom of your screen? That's Carrie. Hi. And <laughs> Hi. Carrie is awesome, and Carrie fights like hell for women. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we love that. And, and as I've said before openly, if I could canoe in a river of estrogen, it would be a better world. <laughs> There's no question about it. And she, I think, will be delighted to see uh, me reach out through our FM radio and our various ra pro traditional radio sources to get um, huge groups of teenage girls to join this kind of confabulation and um, uh, do something fun. I think, Carrie, it sounds like a good idea, right? Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to sign off here, and we're done. And Haley, I'm going to leave you to say hi to Carrie. And we'll just come up with a comfortable, easy thing down the road in a few weeks. And then we'll get a shitload of people to join on and hear your message, let you talk to people. Uh, we'll make it anonymous or not anonymous. It doesn't really matter. But uh, we'll also make sure that your brand and your book is out there in the forefront. And um, obviously, it's going to help you get the URLs that you're looking for and all the rest of it. Because as we say in Hollywood, Lesson number one, expose yourself. He's down in Studio City. I think if we get a, tens of thousands of girls to send him letters, he can't He can't refuse, right? Well, we love a good call to action and <laughs> we love to agitate. So you're talking to the right group here. Awesome. Hey, on a personal note, thank you for, for all that you do. I've had fun looking, um, following you and, 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 and what you're doing to, to help get the word out about the, the solutions. It's important. Not very many people are doing that. Well, there's all kinds of people that are perpetuating the problem and claiming that's the solution. But it's like going to Goldman Sachs and saying, well, never mind. You understand. <laughs> so we're on your side. I have to run and run off to a fundraiser to, to raise money for gay people. Yes. <laughs> Love it. So, Thank you again. My uh, pleasure. And just know when my people, never mind. I'll see you later. <laughs> and thanks so much. Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Haley, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Haley. This is Carrie. Thank you, Billy. Hi, um, Carrie. Hey, um, I will get in contact with you, and we can kind of go over the format, something you'd like to do, whether we want to do like a town hall type meeting or call in so that we could moderate it. Um, and my thought is, well, Bill is going to help with it, whether he knows it or not. Of course. Or the platform. Um, but. Uh, Yes, you will. So, yeah, well, I, I love the idea. What I'd like to do is uh, a little bit of leeway so that we can make sure we advertise it, we get the feedback, and we get the participation all in line and, and just do it properly. So um, I will be in contact with you, and we can kind of brainstorm some ideas and um, decide on what platform we want to use and move forward with it. And we'll get it advertised. Very exciting and appreciate the opportunity. We will be, uh, I'll get, see if Jennifer, or I can even send over. We have a really cool book tour going on right now. And so we're having actual events with parents and daughters. So if we'd like to coordinate anything before an event where we invite girls to come into to help ensure participation, they can split up. Um, usually about 150 to 200 middle school girls are showing up to the different stops and it's pretty powerful. I don't know the girls, so it'd be give, be a good opportunity for them to ask Q&A. Okay, that would be a good idea. Um, it, we can check out locations and things like that and see what is doable. So, cool. absolutely. But um, I don't know what your schedule is this weekend. How about we say I get in touch with you Monday? Yes. I, I know you are. Are you East Coast time as well? Or are you, I'm are you Central. West? You're Central. Okay. Um, I can... Pro we have uh, we have an uh, yes let's let's touch base maybe Monday morning uh, and and figure out a time if that's okay sure not a problem okay I appreciate it this will be great I'm looking forward to it thank you Carrie I appreciate it probably by that time we will switch systems away from the Google Plus and into something a little bit more stable and you know like when stable I is good. Link, it'll take people there. <laughs> 
awesome. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're fine. I just appreciate your help. Thank you, Billy. Thanks. Okay, nice. All right, we'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Thanks again.